All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of the lab and into the field. And today we have 14 rockets for you of various sizes. Like we talked about in the lab, we're introducing all kinds of new design elements. Um, you know, we, we talked about three. So what we're expecting is motors that don't fuse to the side of the rocket and parachutes and streamers that effectively deploy every time. Now, the wind is quite steep, about 13 miles per hour coming from the southwest. At about 250 meters, it goes up to 22. So we're expecting some unpredictable recovery, but not because it didn't deploy. All right, Casper, are you ready with the first rocket? I certainly am. All right. So here we are with Micro B. So as you can assume by the name, it is a B motor, and it's our first rocket of the day. So that means it's just to test the winds and make sure our setup is at the correct angle and if not we'll adjust things all right let's pop it on three two one beautiful oh good deployment with a streamer it's gonna smash. Okay, so it deployed. Fell kind of fast because it's a streamer. Casper, how did it fare? So the body of the rocket looks pretty all right. You can see the piston and nose cone are in good shape. So is the rest of the body. But at the back of the motor mount, you can see two of our fin couplings were mm -hmm. destroyed and one survived. And then obviously all three fins broke off and the engine is not welded to the rest of the thing. So pretty good on the heat dissipation aspect. Right, so for at least a B rocket, we did not get fusion. So let's see what happens as we move up the chain to a C. Right. Okay. All right. And for our second rocket, here we have Windsock, which has a C6 engine. It weighs 68 grams and it is simulated to go 825 feet. Windsock. Let's see how she goes. Three, two, one. Ooh, streamer. And I lost it. Oh, there it is. There she comes. Ooh, we lost pieces there somehow. All right, let's do CSI. So, as you can see here, we have two disconnected pieces. And on the end of the Kevlar of the streamer, you can actually see we have some melting going on, which you can tell by the way it's all squished up and like pulled mm -hmm. tight. And inside you can even see there's a layer of one of the coupling rings, I believe, mm -hmm. that has uh, deformed in, and even the edge of the rocket here has deformed. So it's indicative that too much heat uh, reached this area of the rocket. Yeah. So maybe it needs some wadding of some sort to reduce that. Right on. Yeah. Go ahead. So here we have our third rocket, which is the Hornet C6. So C6 is the motor of this rocket, and it's uh, simulated to go 775 feet with a weight of 72 grams. So hopefully it'll survive better than the last one. Three, two, one. I have lost it. Did it fall? Yeah. Oh, I lost it. Sorry, buddy, I lost that one. So here we have another similar fate as the previous rocket. So as you can see, missing a fin, but that's not really the problem here. The problem is that once again, on the end of the Kevlar, we have meltage. So inside, once again, the brace has been melted mm. and 
disconnected and our recovery did not work as intended, so causing loss of this fin. So clearly something's got to get in between the thrust and the plastic bit that's holding it on, or we have to reposition the plastic bit to be further away right, from the we nozzle. Want, we want the heat to dissipate before it reaches our structural plastic bit. Okay, all right, let's move on. Here we have our next rocket, which is called the Sawfly. It's an upgraded engine with a C12 versus a C6, and it should reach 825 feet based on the simulation with a mass of 86 grams of the rocket body. Cool. Now, this rocket is a C12. That is a composite rocket, which is made out of different material than the C6, which is a black powder rocket. Right. We're hoping the ejection heat profile is slightly cooler and we don't have a repeat of our separation issues. Let's try it out. Three, two, one. was fast. Boy, it is fast up there. We're gonna get it. I think. <coughs> We're gonna get it back. Rolling. Okay, this is T-Bird. You can see it's shaped a little bit different than the other rockets because it's a B4 by three, meaning it has three B4 engines. Um, it weighs 140 grams, probably 141.5 because of a little modification we just made. What modification did we make, Casper? Well, the rocket was standing up and a gust of wind came and it tipped over and broke right in half. So oh, no. it's been Gorilla Tape back together. Oh, Gorilla Tape. That makes me feel good about the safety. Well, it should be all right. Let's see. <laughs> Three, two, one. Mm. Oh, look out. <laughs> wow. That did not work. That blew. No. So here I have an amalgamation of destroyed rocket parts all from the previous rocket. As you can see, we have our motor mount, which is in very good condition, and it actually did a very good job with heat dissipating because none of the rest of the rocket is melted. <laughs> Part of the reason why that happened is because we only had a single ignition out of three. So um, that's why the rocket was so squirrely and didn't really go anywhere. Um, and then the rest of it kind of crumbled to the ground because it had no opportunity to deploy its recovery and no opportunity to create drag or anything, but at least the tape joint survived. The tape joint? survived and by the way that length of tape eyeballed by Sheldon Bird to the perfect length perfect in length one go in one go so here we have Andromeda which is our first D of the day um, Andromeda has a D20 and weighs 102 grams and should reach a nice clean 1,000 feet Ooh. and hopefully will ignite properly we'll never and see it again beautiful bicolor isn't that nice three two one Okay. That's got a parachute. That might go into the pit. I think we can get into that pit. Wow. That was nice... It was really nice. Yeah. But it's in the pit. We'll check and see if we can get to it after the show. Here we have our second D20 named Triangulum. Triangulum should reach 925 feet because it weighs a little heavier than the other one at 116 grams. All right, we've got uh, a significant uh, change in launch pad attitude to compensate for the upper level winds. Take it away, Casper.
Well, would you label that as ballistic? No, I would label that as completely unstable. All right, here we have Darner Fly, which is a D20, and that one is meant to go 725 feet. Um, I can't tell you how many grams it is because I forgot to write it down. We've changed the attitude so that the rocket is now laying on the angle instead of hanging from the angle to see if that fixes any friction issues we may have had. All right, let's give it a try. Three, two, one. Well, here's the rocket. That one didn't reach stability. We think it hung up on the launch pad because of the high attitude. So we've fixed the angle to be less than 9.8 degrees. Now we're up to three. And you can see when it hit the ground, it burst into a million pieces. So off we go. Here we have Char. This is our first D22. And hopefully it fares better than the previous rocket because we've adjusted the attitude of the launch pad. So, Char should reach about 1,000 feet and weighs 148 grams. Nice. Three, two, one. Wow. Really good. There it is. That one. That exploded right. It was air bursted. It, <laughs> that was the last. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what happened there. <laughs> That's what I Boink. So here we have Callista, another D22. We're hoping it doesn't do the same thing as the last. Um, and it weighs, uh, let's see, 148 grams and should reach 1,050 feet. So an equivalent height as the previous. All right, let's see what happens. Three. Two, one. Nice one. Nice wind caulking. Long delay. Go, go, go! It, whoa! It's, it's in, in the fairgrounds. Fair. All right, this is our third D22, 24 millimeter. It's called Sounding, and um, it is meant to go up about 750 feet. Three, two, one. Awesome. All right. Oh, now we're gonna lose that one. Where'd it go? Oh, I got it. There it is. That was a four second delay. Let's go to where the trees. Did it get over? I lost it. I feel like one part went directly into the tree. All right, yeah. we'll take a look later on. I'm going to modify the No, nope. e start again. Oh. Come at me. Go ahead. Here is the first E of the day, Kuiper. Um, it's an E26 and should reach 1,025 feet with a mass of 228 grams. Ooh, Quite big. larger than the previous ones. All right, let's see if we get her back. Three, two, one.
way up there. I heard the pop, no shoot, right shoot. It's not quite It's tangled. Coming right down right here. Yeah, it's tangled up. Boisk! Well, at least we'll get it back. Here we have Helios. Helios is an E35, so a step above the previous rocket. Uh, Helios weighs one, or sorry, Helios weighs 314 grams and should reach 1,100 feet. All right, Serious let's rocket. see. Gust. Go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, here. Here it comes. It's like gonna it. go a ways. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Little Gus it picked it up. Oh. It's either gonna it wants to get into the trees if it can. Yeah. No. Oh come on, man. <laughs> Over she goes. Long gone. Yeah. Into the pit. Maybe we'll get it back. Maybe we won't. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Casper. Here we have Saturn. It's our first and last F of the day, and it should reach a monstrous 1,200 feet despite its immense 418 gram weight. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we can recover it because the printing time on this is not. Short. Correct. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. That wow. Oh, heard it. Good deployment. Oh, here it comes. Oh, I don't think we're going to see that one again unless it really speeds up its descent. Oh, it's right over us. No gust, no gust, no gust. Yeah, we're going to have this one. Casper's going to try. That's because there's no shoot. Casper's going to try to plow. Oh, no, he's down. Oh. Yay! <laughs> We got it! Yeah, you're better off with no shoot if it's windy, right? Casper, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 